Um, well, thank you for thank you for coming. And um, this uh, yes, this was I got the call from the Leukemia and Blood Foundation last year saying we're having this inaugural patient um, symposium, and would I speak? I said I'll be happy to do so. But I hadn't actually realised that. Um, First of all, I was speaking first, and second, they wanted me to fill the best part of an hour on bone marrow biology, which was quite a challenge, as you can imagine. And so I felt a bit like this recent portrait of myself. Um, <laughs> this is uh, an unnamed member of the Leukemia and Blood Foundation executive who suggested, who, who won the toss and put me into bat. And as you probably know, if you're opening the batting, what, what really matters is what's at the other end. And I, some of you remembered <laughs> Jeff Thompson, and I'm sort of scanning the audience, and I'm not sure that I see, I think there was a Dennis Lilly in Auckland, he asked a very difficult question. But anyway, so we'll kick off. And I just want to disclaim, first of all, I mean, I'm fairly light-hearted, and that doesn't, I don't want to detract from the fact that the, I'm going to talk about some diseases which you're all familiar with, are very serious diseases, and they cause a lot of misery and, and problems, but I guess that I sort of tend to have a fairly light-hearted approach to some of these things, hopefully makes it slightly more entertaining. I accept this is a mixed audience, and most people here are not health professionals, so I'm going to assume not a lot of basic knowledge, but a wee bit. Uh, no offence meant for those of you who know some of this stuff. Um, but that's, I guess, trying to get the, the level right is quite important. Uh, so to those with advanced knowledge, I, I don't want to cause offence, uh, hang with me. I've got a lot of pictures, I've stolen vast numbers of pictures off the internet, and um, if you get lost, hang on, because I, I sort of sort of flight of ideas this to a certain extent. But there's quite a lot of repetition, um, and a lot of changing of subject. Um, and I will leave plenty of time for questions. I've given an hour, and I think this takes about 45 minutes, but not much time for answers, perhaps, uh, depending on the questions. Um, so this is the outline of what I'm going to do. Um, uh, first of all, what, where is bone marrow? Many of you will be familiar with that. Um, I want to talk about cells, because bone marrow is cells, uh, as is most all of our body, essential, most of our body. So I want to talk quite a bit about cells. Uh, talk about how cells divide, uh, their signalling, because uh, cells need to signal to each other. Um, I want to talk about stem cells because they are important and you'll have all heard of stem cells potentially. I want to talk about what bone marrow actually does, what we take for granted, what it does every day of our lives. And then talk a bit about what can possibly go wrong and I want to sort of present a model for bone marrow diseases. Um, and I'm not going to cover all diseases but some general diseases. So obviously when you're giving a talk you say well we'll do a Google image search of bone marrow. Of bone marrow. So I started with marrow and I got that which is a fairly indigestible vegetable that we used to eat when I was a child. Um, we tend to, this is, this is a, a, a zucchini that's grown up, as you know. Um, then you do, I tried marrow bone and I got that, which is obviously a delicacy in some parts of the world, um, that don't have enough fat in their diet. I mean, that's, this is, uh, I'm not sure if my point is working particularly well. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the, looks like the leg of a large animal, um, which has been roasted. And you can see that's mostly fat in there. Um, and then I guess what we really mean when you look for bone marrow is really the stuff inside the bones. And we're, we're particularly interested in, this is a skeleton, we're particularly actually interested in the central bones because there are two types of bone marrow. There's what we call red bone marrow, because it's red, okay? And that's um, within, in children, when you're first born, all of your bones have got red bone marrow. They're all filled with cells. Uh, as an adult, it tends to sort of retract as you grow up so that the, the, what we call the distal bones or the extremities tend to be filled with white bone marrow. The red marrow is concentrated in the central part of the skeleton. And that's particularly important if we want to get a sample of it. There's no point in getting a sample from your shin in an adult. Okay? That's why we get it out of the pelvis or occasionally out of the, the breastbone or the sternum. And red bone marrow is, made, is, com is comprised of cells. Whereas the rest of it is yellow bone marrow, like we saw in that picture of that animal, um, and that's in the peripheral bones, and that's just fat. Okay, so in a baby, the bone marrow is everywhere, and with time, it regresses to the central part of the skeleton. And how do we get to it? Well, this will sort of raise some familiar. Um, we stick a needle into the back of the pelvis usually, and what we do is we stick it through the skin and into the under local anaesthetic. Sometimes a bit of sedation if people are really anxious about it. Into this sort of area of bone and. Uh, where there's this sort of spongy bone and a lot of cells in these gaps between the bones, uh, uh, between these sort of uh, if you like fragments of bone. Um, we use two types of needles. I don't know if people can see there. Should I? Are you all right? Um, we have this smaller needle and we, we take a sample of bone marrow which we can put drop on a side and spread out and you can see little fragments, little particles of bone marrow there. And the second sample we call a trephine where we get a, a piece of bone marrow intact and we can slice that up and look at that. And at sort of higher power, 
This is a fragment of that bone marrow, the aspirate, where we spread it out in a slide. And you can see at higher power, this is down a microscope with special stains to sort of stain up the cells. We can see the individual cells pretty well. And that's called an aspirate. And that, that gives us a very good in individual sort of detail for the cells. The second sample, this trephine, what we do is we put it on wax and then slice it thin. And you can see there's a little fragment of bone here, but this is about half fat. Even the red bone marrow is about half fat. These spaces are fat cells. But we can actually, we don't get such good detail of the individual cells, but the architecture is very well preserved because we don't sort of smash it up. We just take it out as a piece. So these two give us a very good look at the bone marrow. And most, or well, many people in this room will know what that feels like to have one of those done. Um, so that's the bone marrow. Cells, and I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about cells, our body really is sort of fluid plus cells. Okay? Cells are the primary component of, of all organs in our body, and bone marrow and blood is no, no exception. Um, there are often sort of, these cells are sort of supported by stuff we call connective tissue. I mean, the obvious example is your bones is connective tissue. It has some cells in it, but it's sort of also got this sort of scaffolding. And we have other sort of scaffolding called connective tissue. Sometimes it's called stroma. And that's important in the bone marrow as well. Cells are small, so 10 to 20 micrometres in diameter. Now, what does that mean? In the 19th century, there was a great theological debate about how many angels could dance on the head of a pin. Well, how many cells can dance on the head of the pin? The answer is about 100, on the assumption that a, a pinhead's 1 to 2 millimetres in diameter. So, you know, 100 cells across a pinhead. So they're very small, which is why we need microscopes to look at them. This is a cell. This is a simple version of a cell. A cell has got, it's like a bag. It's got a sort of outline called the membrane, which is sort of a bag which is like the skin of the cell, which holds the contents in. It has a thing called a nucleus, which is very important because that's where the genes or the DNA resides. And then it has this other stuff called cytoplasm, which is where the sort of energy processes for the cells and things occur. And they're complex. So inside a cell, this is, a, this is believe it or not, a simplified version of inside a cell. We have that nucleus in the middle here. And then we have all these different sort of bits and pieces. This stuff called endoplasmic reticulum is important for making protein. That thing called the Golgi complex uh, is uh, important for excreting protein out of the cells. The mitochondrion that generates energy for the cell. This lysosome sort of degrades stuff inside the cell that you want to get rid of. So it's, it's very complex. And the outside of the cell is quite complex as well. Um, the, the surface of this sort of membrane in the bag is, is studded with these proteins, which are very important. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I sort of thought, you know, in the Manawatu we have a rugby team which doesn't perform very well, but our supporters are excellent and they, have, they wear a green bucket on their heads, they're called the bucket heads. I thought the Auckland team could do with this, it's a bit flasher, but the Auckland team could do with sort of this instead of a, a green bucket because it sort of matches the colours. I don't know where I found that on the internet. Um, so that's cells, I'm going to come back to them. I need to talk a bit about DNA and chromosomes and genes, and this picture sort of summarises that. Within that nucleus is where the DNA is, and when cells divide, that DNA gets organised into these big chunks of DNA called chromosomes. And humans have 46 chromosomes, other species have different numbers, but the DNA gets organised mainly so that cells can divide and separate those out. But if you look down, uh, get down to sort of really high power and, and really analyse this, this DNA comprises this long chain molecule which has these building blocks called bases. And they form a code, so there are four different bases, A, C, G and T are the short names we give for them. And they form the code for the, if you like, the blueprint for, for a, what makes me human and, and not a dog, for example. And it's also very important for what makes one cell behave in one way and not another, depending on which genes are switched on. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So the DNA is the blueprint for the species. Every cell in our body has all of the DNA, all the genes. Okay. <coughs> And, and that's organised in these big collections we call chromosomes, particularly when cells divide. If you want a cell to divide, you sort of the DNA gets packaged up in these big chromosomes and separated out. Okay. And these smaller segments we call genes. And the genes are important because genes, if you like, have the code for proteins. Proteins are really the business end of uh, of cells. So the thing that makes my skin cell a skin cell and behave like a skin cell is certain proteins are expressed in those cells. Although those cells have all the genes for the whole body. Most of them are switched off, and, and in that cell in, that makes my skin cell a skin cell are the genes that make it stick to the other cells and keep water in and keep bugs out. Whereas in my brain, the nerve cells, although they've got all the genes for the whole body, the ones that are actually turned on or which are, if you like, transcribed into proteins are the ones that allow those cells to interact with each other and pass electricity to each other, which is what nerve cells have to do. Okay? And so that's what I meant. So different genes are expressed. Although all cells have got all the genes, certain genes are switched on or expressed and turned into proteins in different cells. And that makes those cells different and have different functions in the body. 